Hi, I'm Nikki Kaminga from Keepsaker Supplies. Recently, I've created two free courses to help people learn how to make breast milk and memorial jewelry over on keepsakersupplies.com. In this video, I'll be using UV resin, direct pour, and cabochon stone techniques to create a lock of hair ring and a small bonus necklace. I've linked to all the supplies I'm using in the video description, which are for sale on my website. This lock of hair is from a baby, and the family only had the tiniest amount to send. We sent them a kit in the post and asked them to retain some hair from the tiny lock they had. I always recommend you ask clients not to send all of it in case it's lost in the post. When I saw the amount of hair in person, my breath caught for a moment. I always want to do the best work possible, but it is slightly trickier with a tiny sample. There were around 10 strands of hair, so I prepared to work very carefully and be careful not to breathe directly on the hair until it was in the resin to make sure it didn't blow away. Put a small drop of resin and some sparkle mix on a piece of label backing paper, then stir it thoroughly. Put your ring in something to hold it steady. I'm using reverse action tweezers here. Put a small dot of the coloured resin into the ring. You don't need full coverage and each layer should be very thin otherwise the light can't penetrate enough to cure the UV resin. Move it to the edges, being careful not to get any around the top. You could add cremation ashes, umbilical cord or preserved, dried and finely ground breast milk powder in with the colour. Cure for 99 seconds on a low heat setting then repeat with another layer. Spell the colour around so that you get a beautiful galaxy effect. I'm also carefully placing some little flecks of opalescent flakes from the sparkle mix. The colour should come around two thirds of the way up the sides or just under the edge and be opaque now. Cure again, then you're ready to add the hair. Prepare some fresh label backing paper with a thin line of resin, then place the strands of hair along it. The resin stops them blowing away and helps control placement. If you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. Cut the lock of hair in the middle and double up the strands to thicken the lock. Check against the width of the ring to see how long you want the hair you'll place inside, then cut the hair a little longer than you'll need. Double up the hair again with what's left, then cut to size and place it in the ring. Move the hair around inside the ring. This takes a lot of practice and patience, but there's no rush. When you're happy, you can cure it under the lamp. Then do a thin layer of clear resin on top to protect the hair. I had a little resin covered hair left on the label backing paper and wanted to make a small gift for the family. Put a little resin into the mold and transfer the hair across. Move the hair around until you're happy with the placement. I only have a tiny bit of hair here, so I'm doing my best to get it in the centre so it can be seen. Put the stone in the lamp to cure, then do a second layer, this time with just a little colour mixed in with clear resin, then cure again. The next layer should have a little more colour, and the final layer should make the stone opaque. I was about to top coat the ring when I noticed some hair poking out of the side. This can easily be corrected by taking an ultra fine foam sanding pad and gently rubbing it away. This made the stone opaque, but then when you add the top coat it's shiny again. Take your time to make sure it doesn't bleed over the edge and has a slight dome. Cure it, making sure it's totally, completely level. Whilst it's curing, you can do a layer of top coat on the back of the stone. Cure both pieces for 99 seconds, then allow to cool completely and cure again, then cool before touching them. To set the stone, just remove it from the mould and trim the edges with scissors or side cutting pliers. Place inside the setting and use the back of a teaspoon or a curved burnisher like I'm using here to press down the points to secure the stone. Add a chain and the little necklace is ready. Photograph the pieces, then they're ready to send to your client. Usually, even if I'm doing a direct pour setting like a ring, I like to make a quick stone first with the client's lock of hair and the colour they've chosen. I take a photo and send it to the client to check they're happy with the colour. I let them know this stone is theirs to keep free of charge, 
Proof photos virtually eliminate complaints from clients who don't like the colour, which is especially important with the direct pour setting because it's hard to remove the resin to remake the piece. Because this lock of hair was so tiny, I spoke to the family first and they were happy for me to go ahead without the mock-up stone proof. I'm so grateful for their permission to film this anonymously as part of my series of courses to make breast milk and memorial jewellery. We have two free courses available at keepsakersupplies.com at the moment and I hope you get a chance to try them. Thanks for watching. Now relax and do some crafting.